It was just supposed to be a routine job. And I found myself amongst unlikely folk. <laughs> Humans. Ah, the rest of me kin called me soft. <laughs> but the money, ooh, the money was good. And we were good at it. Then the boss brings down this new job. <laughs> Dead dwarves. So I rouse up me boys, and we find ourselves in a journey we weren't expecting. Hargus is a noble dwarf from Clan Hammerheart with radical ideas. His concept that dwarves can not only befriend non-dwarves, but that they might work together in harmony is snubbed by most other dwarves. Skizik is a human who carries a two-handed sword and unleashes curses upon his enemies, which are granted to him by the dark and mysterious one. Mother. Wirebone, a gnomish artificer, is always looking for new ideas and creating new machines. He is perhaps the most famous inventor in Vulcaminar. Morthos, another human and beneficiary of the Dark Mother, is seeking his place among the dwarves of Vulcaminar. Comfort and prestige are his primary motivations. Ubalek Hammerheart, older cousin of Hargus, has a checkered past. He has been in trouble with the law more times than anyone dare counts. However, Ubalek is immensely resourceful and has gained valuable ties with the ruling elite, Clan Ironbrow. Vernayon is a dominion under Volcaminar rule. It is a series of arable basins which are tended to by elves, used mostly to grow long grains. These growing pools follow the Gruner Fluss and lie approximately three to seven sleeps wellward of Vulcaminar. Fish, livestock, mushrooms, and other crops are also grown here. Nogris is the furthest wellward dominion of Vulcaminar. Few dwarves call this place home, however thousands of humans, elves, gnomes, and darrow live here under the Noct Watch Enforcement. A grand church dedicated to Sivankov is located here. When we left our heroes, they had entered the grottos which contained the graves of the elders at Vernayon. Spectral images rose from the river without disturbing the water. They looked exactly like the soul guardian which they had first encountered with their initial arrival at the farming pools except for their eyes. The cold blue eyes of the first Soul Guardians have been replaced with red hot flame. Ubalek tries to speak with the ghostly elves, but only feral grunts are returned in response to his questions. As battle is joined, it becomes obvious to our heroes that not only have the eyes changed, but their battlefield demeanor has changed as well. The previous guardians could speak simple sentences and seem to be protecting their ancestral home, while these fiery-eyed specters exhibit animalistic traits, throwing themselves passionately into battle without word. Torches are lit by each burial cairn, flickering furiously, causing wild shadows to dance on the cavern walls as the fight rages on. Morthos flies upward in an effort to gain an advantage, but aerial combat ensues when a soul guardian follows suit and attacks. Its touch burns deeply into Morthos's body. The feeling is quite different than the chilling touch of the antecedent blue-eyed guardians. One by one, the deranged apparitions are dealt with. Six fall in total. After the fight is resolved, the group searches the entire area. Six graves are found, matching the number of soul guardians faced in battle. Investigation of the graves reveals that the bodies are just days old. These dead clearly resemble the faces and mode of dress of the soul guardians which they had fought. The elders here protecting their own graves. There are obvious signs that thieves have already rifled through most of the burial carns, but Ubalek finds one small body that had only been hastily searched. A few small trinkets and baubles are his prize. One item stands out from the rest, a small piece of polished obsidian wrapped in sturdy but beautiful silver wiring to give it the appearance of a scarab beetle. Morthos sees the scarab and immediately ponders the figurine's magical potential. The clever warlock spends just a few minutes interacting with the little beetle when suddenly it springs to life and flies from his hand. 
Morthos calls it the Silver Scarab. Its true name, Nyrisi. Ublek will be able to summon forth Nyrisi from the Shadowfell for up to one hour per day. He can see through the Scarab's eyes. What an incredible find. When our heroes leave the grottos and head toward Nogris, a group of refugees is sighted at the wellmost edge of Vernayon. They say that they have attempted to spread the word far and wide that any and all residents of the elven communities are welcome to seek refuge in Nogris. The church there will offer protection. Our heroes offer to accompany the group of elves on their way to Nogris, but they are declined. The elves prefer to wait for more refugees to arrive. Travel to Nogris goes swiftly. The Nashorn mounts make the journey in less than half a day. Approaching the outlying dominion of Vulcaminar, our adventurers hear metal on metal sounds of battle ahead. Ubelek sends his newfound friend Nyrisi ahead to scout. As the wily dwarf peers through the eyes of his enshadowed scarab, he sees a massive battle taking place in the small settlement. Lava Barch Dwarves and Shatterakul fighting side by side, laying siege to the Temple of Sybenkoff. Ubelek moves closer, hiding in the shadows and crevices of the natural formations which make up the small town. When he sees a Lava Barch soldier about to strike down a defenseless elf, the steady rogue takes aim and lets loose a shot from his trusty bolt thrower. The head of his target sprays blood on the poor elf as the dwarven body collapses dead to the ground. Ubelek quietly retreats back to the rest of his party to explain the battlefield layout and decide a course of action. However, wanting to see for himself, Morthos has already cast an invisibility and flown above to gain perspective on the battlefield. The warlock sees a dwarven cleric defending the steps of the temple, blasting fiery rays down at dwarven oppressors. Revealing his location, Morthos lets loose a hell rhyme blast at the already weakened opponent facing the cleric. The stoic woman raises her gaze to consider her new ally and calls out, Who in the dark are you? Morthos lands at her side and assures her, We're the heroes of Hinterspool. Hi, I'm Chris, and I play Morthos. Thank you for listening to this episode of Heroes of Hinterspell. If you like this podcast, check out To Destiny, which takes place in Volcaminar at the same time as our game from a totally different perspective. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you listen to podcasts.